Hi guys, uh, welcome back to another tutorial on Proxmox VE. Um, previous video we clearly showed you how to upload an ISO file and so uh, leading on to that is going to be how to create a virtual machine using that ISO file. So once you've logged into your uh, root account on Proxmox um, you should be presented with a screen similar to this. Normally actually this is collapsed on the left hand side so you can just open that out. Now I've got a few virtual machines here running already. Um, the ones with the green arrows are active, the ones that are greyed out are currently switched off. Um, so depending on where you're at with Proxmox, uh, you may have a couple here already. Um, but presumably if you're watching this video, you're going to have a none there. So in order to get going, um, once you click on your node over there, you're going to come over to the right hand side of the screen and over here you're going to see three blue buttons. Um, you've got create VM, create CT, and then log out. Uh, CT is for a container. That's something we'll come on to in a later video. Uh, it's basically just a smaller, less resource-hungry version of a virtual machine. Um, whereas a virtual machine is a full virtual computer in its own right um, with its own dedicated resources. Um, so if you're going to be doing something fairly power hungry, um, I suggest you go ahead and create a virtual machine. So to do that, we just click on create VM and this little pop up will come up. Now, the first thing here is the nodes. Now, if you've got multiple servers running and, for example, you know, you've got a master and a backup, then this will have all your different nodes listed over there. I've only got one, um, so we'll, we'll stick to what it suggested. Uh, it's then going to have the VM ID. Now this populates by itself to the next available ID, as you can see on the left here, it's slightly greyed out now. It starts at 100 and works its way down. You can use any number that you wish as long as it doesn't already exist in the pool on the left hand side. So. Um, as you can see, I've got up to 107 um, because I used to have 105, 106, and they've been deleted. So it's just chosen the first free VM ID. Uh, I'm just going to leave that as is. Next thing is we're going to give it a name. Um, we're going to be installing Ubuntu on this. Uh, so I'm just going to call it Ubuntu, and it's going to be version 16. Um, dot zero four. Um, you can put whatever you like in here again as long as it this name doesn't it already exist over here and uh, as long as there's no uh, funny characters or spaces it um, if there's any issues like if I had a space it will go red and won't I let you carry on so that's why if it goes red it means you've got something in there it doesn't like resource pool we'll leave that blank for now click on next now this is where we choose um, what type of operating system we're going to install so we're going to be installing Ubuntu, which is uh, Linux 4.x. Um, you can choose various others. If you were going to install a version of Android, for example, um, you'd probably click other OS types here. Click on Next. Now, CD, DVD. Obviously, we don't have a CD or DVD attached, but this is a virtual one. Um, and this is where we're going to tell it where our installation uh, file is, our ISO file is that we uploaded earlier. And we uploaded that to our local storage. Um, again, that's all I've got attached here. If you had network attached storage or something similar, then um, it would it would show up here. But mine's going to be local. And the ISO file. Now, I've got a few in here already, but we're going to install um, Ubuntu 16.04.3, which is the latest LTS version. And that's going to be the um, desktop version. There is Ubuntu 17 out, but that's not on LTS, so it's not got long-term support um, as yet. So if you're going to play around with Ubuntu, then I suggest um, starting off with version 16.04, um, especially as most of the tutorials on YouTube on how to do things in Linux um, are based on Ubuntu 16.04. So we click on that, and yes, we want to use this drive. Um, you do have the options to use a physical one if you've got one attached, um, or not to use anything at all. But at this stage, that wouldn't be very useful um, because we can't then install the operating system. So we click on Next. Uh, now you've got quite a few options here. You can pretty much leave them all as default for now uh, until you get a bit more into uh, modifying your setup. Um, I've got a 
external hard drive connected to my server as well um, just for backups um, so I don't want to connect to that I want to connect to my local um, storage and LVM that's the bit of storage that's segmented for virtual hard drives and we're just going to give it a hard drive space so you know 32 gigs is probably fine but I like to just give it 100 um, depends obviously on how much space you have to spare um, the cache version here, uh, again, it's completely up to what you want to go. I'm not going to go through what each one of these means. I'm just going to leave it for default for now. Basically, that just uh, allows you to change how it writes its cache. So it, that affects the um, parity of your data and, and how if if there's a power cut or something like that or something goes wrong, how much data you may potentially lose because it's in cache rather than being written to your um, hard drive straight away. Um, and the rest of these you can just leave as is. So we then click on next. Now we get to choose how many CPU cores we're going to provide. Now this all depends on what sort of hardware you've got. Um, so my particular server has two sockets so it's got two CPUs in it and each one has eight cores so that gives me a total of 16 cores um, now you can assign as many virtual machines all with 16 cores as you want but obviously it will then split the usage of that between the ones that are currently working um, it's really not advised to try and put more cores that than you actually have because otherwise it really reduces the performance rate because it's trying to send information to something that doesn't exist. So I'm just going to put it at the maximum I can to get the best out of it. Um, the type, again, leave this as default. Um, you would normally change this if you're going to be installing some interesting um, operating system that requires a specific type of CPU to be virtualized. For example, if you're trying to install uh, Mac OS or Android or something like that, you will probably need to change the, uh, what type you choose, but that will be explained in any sort of tutorial that you watch on how to install that. Once you've done that, click Next. Uh, now we get to choose between the different memory types. So you've got fixed memory and you've got um, balloon memory so um, basically fixed memory is we say right this is how much memory you can have up to a maximum and it will automatically use as much as it needs up to that maximum um, hence the ballooning uh, some operating systems only allow fixed memory um, such as Windows unless you install the appropriate virtual drivers um, I'll probably do a tutorial on installing Windows as it can be a bit funny as Windows usually is um, I tend to do the automatic one because I've got, for example, I've got, how much RAM have I got? I've got just shy of 24 gigs of RAM on here. Um, obviously, they're all gonna, that's all going to be shared amongst all these other virtual machines on the left. So I'm just going to give it, I don't know, 8,000 megabytes. I know that's not quite 8 gigs, but um, you get the idea. And a minimum of... 2048 which is uh, 2 gigabytes of memory so it will fluctuate between those two parameters um, depending on what it needs. Then you click next and the final bit before we confirm all of this is the network. Again this is all going to depend um, vastly on what you're trying to achieve with your virtual machine. Um, I tend to stick to bridge mode basically what that means is that your virtual machine becomes another computer on your network it is assigned a individual IP address and if someone was to look on your network you would see a, another computer on there wouldn't know it was virtual straight away um, so this is the easiest one to get going um, you do have NAT mode and you can also just turn it off you know if you don't want it to have any network device at all um, but we'll stick to bridge mode and this is the only um, bridge that I've got available that's there automatically and again, this is what the default uh, network interface card is that it's assigned it. Um, I don't know why, but I've always been told the uh, best thing to do, unless told otherwise, is to change this to the Intel E1000. Um, so that's what I tend to do. You can put a static or a, you know, a self-defined MAC address in there should you wish. And if for some reason you want to, you can limit um, the the 
bandwidth uh, for that NIC. Um, but I just tend to leave everything as is apart from change this to E1000. So click next, it gives you a little summary of what's going on. If you've got any issues, you can just go back, but we're gonna click on finish. And you can see down here on the task list, it's now creating that VM and it's having a little think about it. And now it's gone, okay, all done. And we'll see, we now have a grayed out virtual machine that we've just created sitting there. So if you click on that, it comes up with the summary of what's going on. The current status is it's obviously it's switched off. So the first thing we need to do is turn it on. So you click on start at the top right. And then just to further along, we're going to have a thing called console, which we're going to want to open, which basically turns on the monitor so we can see what's going on. Now, the first time it boots, the first time you start a virtual machine you've just created, it will automatically boot from the ISO image you assigned. If during halfway through this you come up with an error or you stop it for some reason and then try to restart the machine, it will not automatically boot to the ISO image again. You will have to change that in the boot order, which I'll come on to in a sec. Um, now, I'm not going to go through on how to install Ubuntu. Um, that will be on a separate video. But as you can see, it's now started up and it is um, going to be booting up from that ISO image ready to install. Um, so I'm just going to close this now. Um, and I'm just going to stop this now. Obviously, doing this is basically like pulling the power cord out of your machine. So not usually advised, but I'm not going to be using this machine for anything other than demonstration purposes. Um, so you can see down the bottom, once I've stopped it, it's having a little think about it. And now it's stopped and it's gone grey. Um, so the options you have once you've clicked on your virtual machine, uh, you've got the summary, which basically lovely, pretty little graphs. Um, you've got the console, which is basically what I've clicked on there, except this does it within a uh, built-in window and this is purely just a VNC uh, session with the computer that you've started. Um, you've then got the hardware. Now as you can see on the CD drive, the virtual CD drive, we've still got this attached. So if you decide right I don't want that anymore or you're going to be doing things like migrating or moving between servers, um, you're going to have to unattach this or eject it. So you do that just by double clicking and instead of saying use that you can either change it to something else or do not use any media and that will then basically it's like ejecting the disk and taking the disk out of the drive. If you decide well I only gave it eight um, total of eight cores um, and you now want to change that you can double click this and you can edit this. Uh, the machine has to be off for you to be able to do this. You can you can edit it once it's up and running and it will put the new values underneath in red but it won't actually take effect until you've completely stopped the machine and restarted it again and you can add further devices like if you want to add another cd drive or another hard drive um, it's completely up to up to you what you want to do here this is the the the, the brains of the computer as it were now what i was going to show you was um the option of how to boot um, should you have closed that down and not come back so now you can see the boot order here has gone back to default of hard drive then CD drive then network just double click on that and you can then change the order just by choosing what you want to go first and everything else will change around so if I change that back to CD-ROM it will automatically put the second one as being your virtual hard drive um, and again, you can change various other things like here. So um, you can change whether it starts. So when your server starts, whether this will automatically start or not. Um, there's there's various different things you can do. Um, the task history, start, stop, start, stop, create, destroy. That's basically a bigger version of what's down here. Um, monitor. This is if you want to add some monitoring uh, software to it, which I don't have installed. Backup. Um, I'll go into these more in, in individual videos later on, but this is to do a full backup of this um, whole thing, so the whole um, virtual drive and everything, so that if you want to then 
import this into another instance of Proxmox or for some reason this version dies and you have to re reinstate everything you, you can always import your virtual machines without losing anything um, the best thing to do in terms of short-term stuff is doing snapshots this is very useful because it's basically like uh, if you've got a Mac it's like the time machine um, it allows you to roll back um, to a previous snapshot so say you are playing around on Linux um, you you're following a tutorial, you type something in and you break it. Instead of having to reinstall everything, re-update everything, before you do something that you think might break it, you take a snapshot, uh, you give it a name. Um, again, you can't have spaces. And you take a snapshot. Um, obviously, there's not much there because we haven't actually installed it yet. Um, but even whilst it's running, if you mess it up, you can just click on there and click roll back and it will take you back to where you were. Um, so this is very useful to do just before you're about to do something you're not quite sure of and you don't want to mess the whole thing up. Um, this is the, the benefits of a virtual machine. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, I'm going to do a couple more videos later on just on um, going into more depth about these various options here and also a specific uh, video on installing Ubuntu um, in case you've never done it you just want to see what it looks like before you uh, invest in it um, but yeah there we go thanks again for watching if you like the video click the thumbs up if you didn't click the thumbs down and um, subscribe away cheers thanks a lot guys